Today, I'm going to tell a story about a lesser known greenhouse gas known as methane. Now, like me, many of you might be enjoying the really warm weather we're having in February. Unfortunately, there's some pretty disastrous effects of climate change, including ravenous forest fires, droughts in places there were never droughts, flooding right here in Philadelphia, superstorms on massive scales, the melting of the polar ice caps, and then food scarcity, not only for animals, but for people as well. And so all of these are really a symptom of the rising CO2 levels in the atmosphere, which is a direct correlation from the burning of petroleum for energy. As you can see, our current level of CO2 is nearly double what it was just 70 years ago. Even more troubling is if we look 20 years in the future. What's detailed here is called the production gap. And I want you to pay attention to the purple line and the red line. The purple line shows the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that us as a society can produce over the next 20 years in order to keep the planet warming by only one and a half degrees Celsius, which as you can see is already having pretty drastic effects. The red line, on the other hand, are countries' current plans and projections to produce CO2, and it's 190% higher than it must be in order to keep the planet from only slowly warming. Now, if fossil fuels and burning fossil fuels are killing the planet, why are we continuing to do that? In order to show you that, I'm going to bring you to another graph where we look 30 years into the future and at the current global energy landscape. You can see that other renewable sources of energy, such as liquid, uh, such as uh, wind and solar, are projected to become a part of our energy landscape. Unfortunately, petroleum and natural gas, both of which are fossil fuels, are projected to be a significantly larger portion. And why is this? And the answer is really quite simple, is that petroleum is very easy to use. You can take it out of the ground, you can put it into your car, and it's a liquid. It transports long distances, and it comes out of the ground as nice little packed, packeted bits of energy. On the other hand, natural gas shows promise for this sort of thing, but unfortunately, natural gas is a gas, and so it's very challenging to move long distances. Now, what is natural gas? Natural gas is comprised approximately 70% of a molecule known as methane, shown here. It's the simplest hydrocarbon, and it's a carbon atom bonded to four hydrogen atoms. In addition to being a gas, methane is extremely chemically unreactive, which means in order to transform methane into more useful compounds, it requires significant amounts of energy and very large-scale industrial plants like this, which are bad for the environment. And they're extremely expensive. So all of those really pale in comparison to why methane is so bad. Methane is so bad because it's actually approximately 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide at warming the planet. And so to give you kind of a uh, picture of what this looks like, there's a map of light pollution in the United States. And you can see light pollution coming from areas you would expect, right? Major metropolitan areas, New York, Philly, Chicago, but then there's also light pollution up here in North Dakota, where there's no real major metropolitan areas. And this is coming from what's known as the Bakken oil field. And this is a picture of what is contributing to all of that light. It's essentially the burning of methane to make carbon dioxide. And why do we do that? So we do that because, like I said, methane is a gas. It's very hard to transport long distances from, ooh, from where it is up in the oil fields. It's extremely chemically unreactive, and so it's very challenging to do anything with it. Not only that, it escapes into the atmosphere quite readily. And since it's 80 times more potent, burning the unproductive burning of methane to carbon dioxide actually represents pretty much the only option that a lot of people are faced at these petroleum refineries. But that's where I come in as a chemist. We want to be able to take methane, which has a lot of potential, and turn it into something that we can actually use productively and help curb this release of greenhouse gas. Now, so I'll take you on a little story down a reaction of methane. 
So like I said, methane is very challenging to react, but it is possible to get it to react selectively to certain products. Shown here is methanol, which is a liquid fuel, as well as chemical precursor. Unfortunately, because methane is challenging to react, the conditions required to take methane to methanol often bring methane all the way to carbon dioxide. This is a lot like if I, if I was at the top of a very steep hill in a wagon with no brakes, and I was expecting myself to stop halfway down. I would just really go all the way to the end, and in this case, even way off the hill. So you might be saying, well, can't we just come back from carbon dioxide? And we kind of can. Unfortunately, that wastes a significant amount of energy, right? Methane is all the way up here. Carbon dioxide is all the way down here. And so this indicates that carbon dioxide is much more stable. Methane has much more potential energy. On the other hand, we have um, industrial processes that are capable of taking carbon dioxide plus hydrogen back up to methanol. Unfortunately, that's extremely challenging. And it's a lot like me riding a bike up a hill in 80 degree weather. Now, my job as a chemist is to come in and figure out how I can vary this landscape. So I've made two variations in my work. The first is changing oxygen to some X2 compound. In this case, it's a boron compound. The second change is using and developing what's known as a catalyst. And so a catalyst is a compound that you add in very small amounts to the reaction mixture that allow reactions that would otherwise not happen occur, as well as help to control where the reaction ends up. And so that's basically akin to me being on top of the hill now on a bike with brakes. That's this change, the X2. The other change, you can see how I've lowered this energy from red to green and then raised this energy. That is helped to, that is controlled by the catalyst. And what this does is it allows me to generate a single liquid product from methane under relatively mild conditions. And now this uh, represents a significant advancement toward the ability to use methane productively and provides a method for sequestering an incredibly dangerous and potent greenhouse gas, methane. Thank you.